Previously, on Realms of Nerds, The Return of Ornon. You open your eyes, and standing in the doorway is a mind flare. Oh, you can be here. I just can't let you leave. You see a horde of psionic rats. See who's gonna cast the sleep spell? You sleep all but two of them. Next up is the flare, who has uh, just reappeared back in the room with Ramash. He is going to grab him and uh, drag him away. Ramash, you regain your senses. You are in a room that is uh, completely dark and you are tightly bound. Roland, trapped in Mind Flayer Hive. Ramash went missing. Please help. So then, uh, if we're at the top of the order, uh, Ryder is up. Do you think this tunnel's going to be much longer? I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bored, and it's kind of dark, and there's an unpleasant smell in here also. I, I don't believe that I, I like it here. I, I don't like it here. Agreed. Believe me, I've, I've been in quite a few stinky holes, but this one is probably the most terrible that I've been in. Second most terrible. Second most terrible. There was one in the fourth circle. Hmm. No. Never again. Ryder, then, I assume on this uh, turn you're just going to keep advancing down the tunnel at this point. Yep, yep. Okay. So then, Mikael, I think... I don't remember. Did we, uh, did we talk about your dancing lights last time? Yeah, he did have it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He did. He sent it in first. Yeah, so when you throw it out, you just you just saw you know, the tunnel ahead. The tunnel ahead. I think when I, I think I think I just told you that there was it was just the tunnel and there was a couple doors heading off of it. Like on the sides opposite each other. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. same side. Yeah, I think we said there was a couple doors on each side and they were all I think you tried the first one and it was just locked. And it's a tunnel, right? No windows. Yeah, yeah, you're in a tunnel. And then uh, up ahead, there was a spot where the tunnels had an intersection. Like perpendicular across or just a yeah, split? Yeah. Perpendicular. Per- perpendicular, yeah. Okay, so it splits in three ways? It's like a four-way stop. I guess, four-way yeah. Stop. It's like yeah. a four-way stop. Okay. And uh, you're up. All right. And how far down the tunnel is the intersection? You're, you're pretty close. I think you can, you can get to the intersection on the, your turn here. Okay, so that's within 30 feet. That's my walking distance. Yeah. Okay. So then I walk to the intersection and I'm going to hold the dancing lights and kind of brighten them as much as I can see and use my dark vision to try to see down each of the directions that I haven't already come from and uh, see if there's anything blocking any of the ways or anything visually. I'd like to do a perception check. That seems like that would be appropriate. It's a 10. With a 10... The only thing that you really notice is that the tunnel going off to the right has some sort of like a uh, a growth on it, like a moss or something like that is kind of in some patches going down that tunnel. The other two tunnels just appear to continue on. You don't see anything of note. Like no doorways or anything within my range of sight? Correct. Okay. Uh, Ryder, I can't quite make out what's further down the tunnels. Can you see anything further? So you can only see, like, 60 feet down there right now? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I think I have 120, if I remember correctly. So what do I see? Roll for perception? Probably, probably. Yep. Probably, probably. Okie dokie. If you are so indulging me, yes. Baby, I'll do whatever you want. 19? <laughs> okay. With a 19, orienting from the tunnel that you've just come down... Uh, continuing farther ahead of that tunnel, you can see a faint amount of light, 
And in the tunnel off to the right, where Mikael saw that there was some moss, you hear the sound of some dripping water. Off to the left, there's nothing of note. You don't see any doorways, or uh, it, it just kind of appears that the tunnel just continues on that way. So, up ahead, we got a light. Right, I hear some water. Left, nothing of real note. So, I'm guessing that maybe we should go forward... Possibly. Towards the light. Towards the light. Hmm. I mean, what else is there really to do? I agree with this. Though I would definitely keep your weapon at the ready. Oh. It's always ready. Any finger guns at him? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Ramash, you're up next. Alright. Can I uh, do a perception check, see if I hear anything nearby the room I'm in? Yeah, go ahead. Perhaps. That's a 12. Okay. You hear a couple of sort of high-pitched but quiet squeaks, and that's it. Oh, shit. Rats. Hmm. <laughs> that's disturbing. Um, damn. He's going to make another attempt at the chain on his right hand to try and snap <coughs> it. So do my strength check. Come on, that 20. Or 15, I guess. Okay. This time, you pull on the chain, and it flexes a little bit further, and you hear one of the links start to sound like it's snapping. Mm -hmm. And just as it does, a magical flash emits, and the heat metal spell is applied to this chain. Not permanently, but just for this one turn. Ah. So since you have that one handy, you want to tell me what the damage for that is? Uh, oof. it's 2d8 fire damage. Uh, so six. Okay, it's actually three because I have resistance to fire damage. And that is not ongoing, by the way. It it's, just, it, it hits you with like a, basically the, the chain heats up as you're trying to break it. Uh, uh, progress. Good. And then Ramash is going to let out another bellowing roar, hoping someone... Friendly, you can hear him. Okay. Next up is the Flayer. None of you are going to encounter him on this turn. Okay. He moves, but we don't see him. The fl- the Flayer moves, and none of you see him. Simo! He's doing his uh, fitness. All right, all right, okay. We're out of jail. We're free again. But we're still in hell, so we're not free yet. Okay, we need to find Ramosh. He's got to be down here somewhere. He got taken away, too. Um, uh, Alright, Kasibo's gonna do... Yeah, ooh, I should say, are there any other cells in this hall by his cell? Go ahead and do an investigation. 19. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so... Uh, it's broken. Every so often I forget how... How much Sibo just, like, rules at seeing things. He's ridiculous. It's <laughs> kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I've got right. my five pairs of glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> the, the monocle slash um, monocular. But if there are other cells in this hallway, he monocular. wants to kind of run down the hall, peeking in there, any of the cells. If it's brick and less than a meter thick, he'd like to look into the cells with his vision, if he can. Okay. I'd also like to say that uh, this is up to you is because your character, but canonically, I'd like you, you to consider that the monocle does that Spy Kids thing where the little smaller ones po- oh, pop that's out. What I, that is what I've literally been imagining this entire <laughs> that's time. That's cool. <laughs> is that whenever he's, whenever he's focusing in, it's like... <laughs> number one? Or number two? Number three? It's it's literally uh, even like Batman's uh, investigator tool in like the Arkham games. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I forgot what you rolled. Was it a 19? Yes. Tangents, man. Tangents. All right. So uh, with a 19, you were just right in front of the door you came out of, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you, uh, you see a few other doors around you that are... Hmm. Okay, I'll give you this. You see several doors around that area that look similar to the one you just came out of. All of them are either too thick or shielded. Magically, you can't really tell, but one way or another, you can't see through them. Okay. I'll say that the two nearest to you, they have that same keyhole deal. You kind of peek through the keyhole, 
And um, it's dark in there, so you can't really see, but you get the impression that there's nobody in the cells that you examined. Okay, and with that perception, can he also do a hearing check to see, like, if he can hear anything while he's moving down the hallway? Okay. Are you going to move out of this area, then? Well, yeah, yeah. he's kind of just, like, walking down the hall towards the cells, and then... Okay. So the cells are actually arranged. I I guess I should have said this. My bad. Um, The cells are kind of in, uh, like, a semicircle at the end of a hallway. Okay. So you're going to kind of leave the area. If you want to search all of the cells, that's going to take all of your action for this. The two I gave you were kind of just like if you were walking towards the hallway. How far is it between each cell? Like, is it just like a few paces or... Is it like a pretty considerable distance? It's yeah, it's not too far. They're pretty close. You know what? I I guess Sibo will just spend the rest of his turn checking all the cells, being thorough. Okay, you check the rest of the cells. There is one cell that you see. You're able to catch uh, through the light again, just the light coming through the keyhole. You see that there's some kind of a cot in one of the cells, but other than that, the rest of them appear to be completely empty, as far as you can tell. Hello. Is anybody in there? Uh, you do not get a response. All right. And then see what's going to take off down the hall. Okay. Uh, Josh, me, you're up. Mm-hmm. Well, Josh, me's just uh, at the bottom of the stairs. Was there just one way to go, right? Yeah, initially. Okay, yeah. So he's down the hall trying to play catch up with Ryder and Mikael. Or Sibo, assuming Sibo may be teleported down there, unbeknownst to him. Okay. Just trying to play catch up. So I think, because you had already come down that way on your last turn, so I think at this point you're, yes. you've are you reached uh, the first intersection in this okay. tunnel here. The one that has the light, the water, and... No, that's later on. You can either go left or right. Oh, it's the dead end thing? Okay. Um, I guess uh, he'd like to investigate? And see what, like, what's down which way, real quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. 18. Okay. Okay. With an 18, you are hurrying to catch up to your companions. You reach this intersection, and you're trying to scan things as you go along. And uh, you're so intently looking at the ground that you come to this intersection, and you collide headlong into a being... Go ahead and uh, roll a, um, words. Uh, dexterity? Fu- yes, thank you, dexterity. I kept thinking reflex, but I'm like, it's not reflex. <laughs> like dexterity check, dexterity, a de- saving, dexterity throw. saving throw. Thank okay. you. Come on, Rogue. I'm struggling to dig. <laughs> 16. Okay, with a 16, <laughs> you're, you're good. You collide with the mind flare that you saw upstairs, who is carrying... Some kind of, uh, like, a bag or a satchel in their arms. Uh, And as you collide with them, your bag and their bag kind of fill their contents onto the ground right next to each other. (laughs) However, with your dexterity check, you were able to quickly scoop your things back up and scurry away. So you're now about ten feet away from this person. Hold on, let me see, maybe. Two things. One, so with my, what is it called? I don't know, whatever the thing is that makes it so I can notice the... It's a character trait. Oh yeah, the character trait. Yeah, the I've noticed the one, the most valuable item that spills in this case. Okay. What's the most valuable item in the moment when he sees everything on the ground right before he scoops everything up? Well, what's the most valuable thing that's in your bag? That's a good question. Oh, I don't have the book of my life anymore. We've destroyed that. <laughs> Dude, that was in our that was in our mind our dream state. Okay, listen, I doesn't even listen. Really I have exist. a note for that, and I still also have the note for that says play with ball bearings for when he was in like the halls thing that practicing for when he plays with real balls. Uh, let's see, <laughs> probably his. Well, that's not kept in his bag, so I guess probably the probably his thieves tools. Okay. The, okay, then. The most valuable thing that you notice is out of this sack tumbles a rat that is peculiarly, peculiarly dressed. Man, I butchered that word. Yeah, peculiarly. <laughs> peculiarly. We're just going to move on. I am struggling so badly today. Peculiarly. 
struggle bus. Okay, a rat that is oddly dressed <laughs> in a purple tunic and wearing a backpack. Ooh. Is it alive? Yeah, it's okay. alive. Can I, with all my stuff, <laughs> yeah, scoop it into my bag? <laughs> Do an animal handling check for me. Damn, I was hoping for a slow to hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy, that's an eleven. <laughs> you scoop him into your bag. Yo, okay, and that, and then yes, what you said before about him being yeet out of there, yeet eater. Okay, so you're about ten feet away. Yo. Now you're just gonna stand up and run. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fuck is this? I ain't dealing with that thing. Oh hell no! <laughs> to the no no no. Bye bye, mind flayer. Okay. Exit stage left. Next up in the in the. Uh, thing would be the rats that uh, Sibo locked in the room. However, uh, they're basically, I mean, I think that most of them are still asleep, actually. But uh, the few that are awake are, like, trying to claw through the door, but they're pretty much ineffective right now. The r- the rats move unseen. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess technically unseen. You at least know where they are. Sibo at least does. Ryder, you're up. Alright, um, is there any, like, could you take a big whiff of whatever is going down down this hallway? Like, do you do you have any way of knowing what could be down there? You can know if it's good or bad. My divine senses extend about sixty feet for aromas. For his eyes, he can see an idiot a mile away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess we are. Um, oh, he just Ryder just keeps walking ar- along the path. Hoping that he can make out any movement inside of the inside the hallway to see if he can figure out what's going on down the path. Okay, so you're you're going towards the light. Yeah. Okay. Can I do a perception roll right now to see if I see any movement within said light, or is it just like kind of a blinding illumination right now? It's no, it's still very faint off in the distance. We can nothing. I'll just go off your last roll because nothing's really changed. You don't see. You haven't made enough progress in this walk yet that you see anything different. All right. The light is just becoming slightly more visible, but you're not there. Nothing has changed. Uh, Mikhail. Uh, Mikhail would like to pick up a stone and skip it across the floor to check for pressure plates, any sorts of traps. Okay. Is there anything down the hallway that we should know? Okay, I or guess we'll just do a strength. Just do a strength check. We'll just see because you're just throwing a rock, so we'll just see how good you are at throwing a rock along the ground. And that, if it's a nat twenty, it's a boulder. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a boulder. No. It's a rock. It's a fourteen, though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you uh, you give this thing a good heave ho. <laughs> And it goes, uh, it goes out of your, out of your sight, and you don't see anything get triggered. So I don't, do I hear anything in particular with, uh, the way it's bouncing across the floor? Nothing, uh, I don't hit anything? No, you don't hit anything, it just sounds like floor, pretty much. Okay. Almost like polished granite? Or cement? No, I mean like the, the stone that you've been walking okay. on the whole time now. Basically, it's the same, same kind of tunnel you've been in before. Okay. Ramash. All right. Well, I was uh, going to continue running down the hallway. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I kind of just assumed that after you did your check, that was where you intended to go. But Yeah. All right. Cool, cool. Ramash, at the start of your turn here, go ahead and do a perception check for me. Okay. <laughs> Critical fail. Okay. Ramash can hear, see, and sense nothing. All right. One more try. A real good pull. He's going to attempt, again, to break the link that he felt snapping under the pressure of his arm. Okay. That's four. You pull and you don't budge the chain anymore. However, since you already triggered the magical ability in this chain, you're going to get hit with some more damage. Okay. Oof. I'm sorry, bud. That's 14. So that nice is seven. crispy Ramash for Mr. Sebo. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> And once again, he's going to bellow as loudly as he can. Hopefully, someone hears him. All right. Next up is the uh, the flare. He moves on the scene. Yes. Uh, again, at this point, again, the mind flare moves, and none of you see him. Sebo, <sighs> you're up. All righty. Sebo's going to keep making his way down the hallway. I guess I'll do another 
perception check to see what he can see. Still investigating for anything that looks like it could be holding Ramash or any traces of the Mind Flare. Anything that could give him an edge. Okay. 24. Okay. And you're doing this check as you continue down the hallway, correctly? Yep. Okay. As you uh, get farther along, you um, come to a uh, sort of a work station or... I don't really want to say that it's like a, a laboratory, but it's a, it's a little alcove off the side that seems to have some various uh, chemical components and, you know, the mortar and pestle, just like all that good stuff. Hmm. See was going to stop in here. Take a look around real quick. Can I roll, I don't know, would that be like insight or history? Looking around, seeing if you can recognize anything or learn anything. Uh, I guess that would be investigation. Ooh, nat 20. Okay. With a nat 20, there's various alchemical components in here, none of them of particular use to you. However, you open up a small uh, wooden chest that is sitting on the floor next to the table, and you find inside three bottles of alchemist fire. Ooh, I will be taking these. And he's going to snatch them up and put them in his sack. His satchel. His His, 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 his backpack. Put them in his sack. <laughs> sad, sad. He took him to the sack. <laughs> Joshmi. Yo. You have just turned and started running down this hallway. Are you looking behind you or are you just assuming that you have someone hot on your tail? He's just going to assume that the thing, the dude's hot on his tail and he's trucking, trucking, trucking. Okay. Are you calling out? Are you doing anything? Mm, no, he doesn't want to draw any unwanted attention that he doesn't already have. <laughs> Okay. Two two mind flares are not better than one. So uh, you just uh, you continue running. You see some doorways that you're passing. Uh, I assume you're just gonna keep going at this point, or are you gonna try a doorway? Or yeah, I'm thinking. Is there okay? So he's gonna before he gets up to the doors. When he when he first sees them, he will glance back to see if the mind flare is chasing him that he can see. Okay. Do a uh, perception check. Can I your roll that one? What was that? Five. All right. As far as you can tell, there is nobody chasing you currently. Okay, he's going to kind of pause, but like be ready to sprint if it doesn't work, and like kind of try to turn one of these door handles. Okay. The door handle does not turn. However, given your experience as a thief, I will give you that... You think that this lock would be fairly easy to pick. Okay, we're going to pick a lock super fast. All right. Roll them bones. Uh, Okay, well, that's going to be 23. You pop this lock and uh, push your way through the door. Okay. He is going to silently shut it as fast as he can and then turn around as fast as he can. Actually, first he's going to see what's in the room before he closes the door behind him. Does it all? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's he's kind of trying to do this all simultaneously. I think if you want to close the door silently, you're going to have to sacrifice really scanning the room before you go in. Okay, fine then. Yeah, he's going to close the door first. Okay. And then so look you, around and like you, see what's there. Okay, you're able to shut the door fairly silently. With his hand still on the door in case he needs to open and leave. Okay. You turn around, and um, what you see is a uh, basically a bedroom. There's a, a low bed and a small dresser. Other than that, it's pretty much empty. On the dresser, there is a some kind of a light source. It's not really a lamp, but it has kind of a, a low green glow to it. Okay. Does the lock still work on the door? Yes. Okay, he's going to lock the door. Okay. And then... Is there drawers for the dresser? Yeah, there's two drawers in this dresser. Okay. He'd like to shoot whatever he does. He can only do one of these things because we're in combat, so it's his action. Okay, so what he's going to do first is he's going to look under the bed to make sure there's not anything hiding under there. (laughs) Okay. There's nothing down there. It's the boogeyman. Hey, with mind flares, I'd rather be safe than brainless. Bite me. Fair. Someone did. 
<laughs> more of a... Okay. Oh, is that not... I can do more? Let him look in the dress. Yeah, I'll... I'll <laughs> Come on. I'll, 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 let you, I'll let you do one other thing, because okay. I feel like that's not real. Just kind of glancing isn't really an action. Drawer. So with each hand, because there's, there's two drawers. Yeah. With each hand, he's going to grab onto the separate drawers. He's going to pull the bottom one out further and the top one out not as much so you can at least kind of see in both of them at the same time okay yeah you pull them open and uh it's just clothes seems to be i mean obviously without pulling the stuff out it seems to be more or less similar to the clothes that you've seen the mind flares wearing the sack drawer <laughs> <laughs> that is one crusty sock check at the bottom of the sack drawer so next up are the rats and uh same thing they can't get out of there uh rider you're up just keeps traveling down the path. Nothing to say, really. Okay. Um, there is something to say. Does the light get closer? <laughs> the light. You are getting closer to the light. I can't help it. It's so beautiful. Now, I'll say uh, you guys actually have reached uh, the source of the light at this point. Or I guess I'll say this just to give you some options here. You can see the source of the light. It's a... Only a small ways off, uh, it is a stairway that appears to go upwards. Can I do a perception check just to get a better view of what's going on around in there? Yeah. Okay. Let's see, my friend. Oh, damn. Okay, that's a 25. With a 25, you see that the first couple steps of this staircase appear to be kind of shimmery. Um, um... Mikhail, uh, do, do you see the, the strangeness on the stairs? I'm, I'm not going crazy, am I? I th- there's, there's like some kind of shimmeriness to it. Do I also see it? Yeah, I think because he's pointing it out to you, you can uh, see it. And I guess with that, we'll go to uh, Mikhail's turn. Yes. The air appears to be glittered around these stairs. Can we reach the stairs within this turn or by the next turn? Yeah, you guys can make it to the stairs. Okay. Well, if I can only make it to the bottom of the stairs but not go up them, I would like to, since he doesn't trust anything, he is going to, if I can reach the bottom of the stairs, test the bottom stair. Yeah, you can reach the bottom of the stairs. look up the stairs if I can to see where they lead. Okay, so you're testing the stairs and looking up. Mm-hmm. Kind of an investigation check, I think. Okay, yeah. That's a six. Okay. You can't see anything up above. Go ahead and do a uh, a dexterity saving throw for me. That's a uh, 18. Okay. You had the, uh, the right idea of checking things out. However, you didn't quite know what to check for. So you uh, go to put your foot on the first step to test it out, and uh, it's not there. And you fall through. However, uh, you are able to turn and grab <coughs> the the edge of, I guess, the door frame on the bottom. And you now see that the first three steps of this staircase are, in fact, illusory, and there is a pit there. Hey, Ryder, I can't see where these stairs are. Lead! Trap door! Can I pull myself up and out? I didn't fall down them, I take it. Uh, well, you did fall. I, you fell in, but you're hanging on to the edge, basically, because okay. you caught it with your deck safe. Ramash, uh, 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 you're up. Um, <sighs> go ahead and do a uh, another perception check for me. Okay. That is um, 13. Lucky okay. Number 13. You feel the room that you're in shake a little bit. What the fuck was that? I gotta get out of here before this place crumbles down around me. I can't see anything, right? Like the door, the correct mind flare left. It is still pitch black in here right now. Fucking shit! Can I do an insight check or something to make sure this isn't like the dream world again? Like I'm not trapped in my own mind or something. Pinch yourself. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do insight. Well, that's a seventeen. Okay. As far as you are aware, this is not a, um, this is not illusory. Okay. I mean, you're in hell, right? Yeah, but like, but As far as you can tell, you're not in, an, in anything illusory. All right. No dream state or nothing. All right. All right. 
Please break, you fucker. And he's going to, yet again, attempt to snap the chain. He needs to get the... He needs to GTFO. It's a 17. With a 17, you give a hard pull and the chain on your right hand breaks. Uh, however, you are going to take more damage as you snap this chain. Okay. Uh, so that's nine. So you're going to take four. Yeah. But your right hand is now free. Can I um, tell if... Is it still warm from, like, the spell preventing me from using magic? Well, I don't... I think at this point, that's probably your turn. Yeah, that's probably my turn. I'll wait till next turn to figure that out. So, next up is the flayer. Again, he moves and none of you see him. <sighs> He's probably jerking off in a corner. <laughs> uh, One of his tentacles. Sibo, <laughs> you're up. Alright, so Sibo's gonna, after grabbing this alchemist fire, um, he's gonna pop his head out back into the hallway and start scurrying down the hallway. Still trying to look around uh, for Ramash or anything else that could give him an edge. This is 25. Okay. As you're running along, you uh, catch sight of a, a portion of the wall that uh, seems to be a little bit wavy. Wavy wall. Interesting. Tebow pokes it. Okay. He's a poker. Your finger goes through it. Ooh. All right. All right. All right. And plunges through the wall. Okay. You uh, jump through and you land in the circular chamber where you woke up. Okay. So we're back here. And this was the same room. He no- Now he knows that just down the hall from here is the room with the tunnel. Right? Correct, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's where we're going to leave you there. Is we just got in there. <laughs> okay. Josh, me, you're up. Okie dokie. Uh, we're going to figure out what the last interesting thing is, unless there's people making out on bed. <laughs> the, there is not. <laughs> Thankfully. The, uh, the orb light thingy. Oh, wait, no, I forgot. <laughs> there are two... Uh, mind flare is just absolutely going at it on this bed. I can't believe you didn't Their see them before. Their tentacles are all over each other's faces. <laughs> There's tentacles in places that you did not know. You can put tentacles and honestly, you're scarred for life. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try that later. Oh, God. <laughs> no, there's nobody on this bed. All right. <laughs> so he's gonna figure out the green light thingy ball. Okay. Green light thingy ball, yeah. Yeah. What is it? Investigation? Yeah. Uh, Ten. I, I mean, it's just a light. It's just got some kind of like a, a rock in it that is emitting this low green glow. Wait, the rock's emitting glow? Y- okay, so it's like a... Imagine like a kind of an old-timey lamp, and instead of having a flame inside oh, gotcha. of it, there's, a, a, there's some kind of a rock that's so emitting a low green it's basically glow. basically their Shiny night rock. light. Sure. Yeah, yeah, they're they're using it's a night on their dusk light thing like that yeah. over there. Okay. You could, uh, I'll let you do something else in here if you okay. want to. Well, now that he's got a moment, he's going to get in his pack and get out this rat that he swiped. And okay. Figure out what the fuck's up with the rat with a tunic with a bag. Okay. Rat with a tunic. Go ahead and um, I guess this is going to be investigation. Okay. 19. Okay. Yeah, so the rat is, like I said, dressed in this. He appears to be, as far as you can tell, very friendly to you. No hostility. He's dressed in, like I said, in this tunic. Uh, he's, the backpack is made of, like, leather and seems to be very finely made, even though it's very small. And uh, it has, uh, like, a sort of, like, two clasps that you could uh, unhook. Start for the rat's back. <laughs> Let me address the rat immediately. <laughs> hmm. Well, you... You're a bit different than the other rats I've seen. Uh? I'd ask what's your story, but I don't speak rat. And I doubt you speak not rat. So, um... Howdy. I hope you understand me. My name is Josh Jimmy Rockham, the greatest thief in the world, but don't be scared, I'm not gonna steal from you. You got a tiny little cute little knapsack. I like it. I like you. Let's be friends. I would give you a name, but I bet you have a name, and I don't want to be that kind of guy. 
Uh, and in your head, you hear, Hello, Hello Joshimi. Joshimi. My, my name, name is, is Seth. Seth. I'm glad you like my backpack. Holy Seth. Oh, my God. I was thinking Virgil, but <laughs> I like Seth a little bit better. It fits you, you know? Where'd you get your knapsack? What's your story? The guys with the tentacle faces made it for me. I think that they made me, too. I remember before I wasn't so smart, but they kind of made me smarter somehow. Okay, so whew, I had two theories. I had either you were a rat that's been <laughs> engineered to be smart, or just maybe dressed up, or you were a not rat turned into a rat. And I see it's the former. Either one would have been pretty cool. It's nice to meet you, Seth. It's nice, it's nice to meet you, too. Do you know how the fuck to get out of this place? I, I don't know. I've lived here my whole life. Ugh, of course you have. Okay, well, we're going to get you into a better life if you want. That sounds great. They're not very nice to me, actually. They make me carry this bag around all the time, and they're constantly fiddling with it. Okay, well, uh, let me take a load off your back, quite literally. And he's going to unclasp the little bag off of the rat. Okay. Uh, since it's such a small bag, do a dexterity check for me. We'll see if you can open it. All right. Dexterity check. And I'll give you advantage on this since he's... Oh, my God. <laughs> so you're going to need to give him double advantage. Since it's not, like, under days. pressure. Uh, yeah, 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 18. Okay. Uh, you unhook the clasps on this bag and open it up. And uh, inside seems to be completely dark. However, at the same time you open this up... Ramash, light is suddenly shown into the <laughs> chamber. I knew it! I fucking knew it! I knew it! Hey everybody, RJ here. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Realms and Nerds. If you are, and you haven't already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications for the show to know when new episodes are released. Also, maybe share the show with someone else that you think would enjoy it. It's one of, if not the best, ways to help our podcast continue to grow. It's available on pretty much every platform out there, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Amazon Music, Pandora, iHeartRadio. Thank you so much to our friend Kyle for composing the melody of our main theme. And of course, thank you to every single one of you for listening to our podcast. I didn't think I was in the rat's bag. I thought I was in the satchel of the mind flare hat. Yeah. But I was close enough. <laughs> what the fuck? Does he, Joshua, is does he hear him saying that? Y you can hear his voice. He sounds normal okay. coming out of the bag. Joshua, what are you doing? Wait, can he see what? Joshua? What? No, you, you can't. You just oh, see can't. light, but, oh. but you just saw the light hat. Just I'm blind. To... Fuck that. For the first person he's calling out for. Hello? Hello? Ramash? Joshua, can you hear me? Yeah. Where are you? Where are you? Did you did did you open up? What's going on? Where am I? Are, are you outside the room? <laughs> I, I'm in I'm in the room. I left the hall. There was a mind flare, and I didn't want to deal with him. Listen, and I found this cool rat named Seth, and he had a little bag, and I opened it up, and now we're talking. Listen, I need you to get in here and undo these chains, okay? I got where one are move. you? I, I'm you. There's light coming in the room. How can you not see me? I, there's no light going anywhere. Other, than, I know. Is it? Is it did the you, light from the lamp? Did you just open? Did you just open a door? No, or a window or something? No, I opened I mean, a little tiny rat bag. I'm sorry, a what? A little tiny bag on a rat's back. This I is, opened the door. Okay, Josh, me, stop fucking around. This is not the time for jokes. Okay, I know you like making jokes. Seriously though, get in here and undo the. Rest, help me undo these chains. I got these chains that burn me every time I try to break them. I broke one. I might be able to get these off, but I need your help. Come on, bring your thieves tools in here and pick the locks. Fuck it. Josh is going to look around the room to see if there's a door that may be opened up that he didn't <laughs> see. Uh, yeah, n not so much. Listen, I like for real, I don't know what you're talking about. I 
I haven't opened any doors. Yeah. Joshua, you say you opened a little bag, right? Yeah. I want you to poke your eye just outside the opening to that bag and look inside. Okie dokie. And he's going to look inside the little bag of darkness. Okay. I think that you can see just barely a little teeny tiny person in there. <laughs> or I should say a little teeny tiny dragonborn. There's like a tiny... It's like a little rat toy dragonborn in the little bag. Josh it looks me. like he's tied up or something. Josh, Why would they tie Josh a me. little toy? Josh me. What? That's me. What? That's me, you moron. How'd he get to be the size of an ant? I don't fucking know. Well, he, get me, me out of here. Let me, he's going to hold the bag over the little uh, dresser and kind of turn it upside down and kind of shake it to try and dump him out. Oh, God. I'm going to take damage. <laughs> oh, very, God. very, very, like, slowly and not like... He's not like... <laughs> okay. You actually... Shake uh, it salt shaker. He does not come out. You are not sure how to get Ramash out of this bag. Wait, Why didn't you fall out when I shook wait, the bag? Wait, you said you got it off a rat? Is the rat, like, able, can the rat do things? Can it get in here? I don't Maybe? know. Listen, he's his own person. I right. just met Is he him. smart? Yeah, he talks to me in my brain. Hey, hey rat. Can, hey, rat. His name you is out Seth. There? Seth. Sorry, Seth. Hey, Seth. Can, can you hear me? Tell the guy in the bag that I can hear him. He says he can hear you. I think okay. that means that you Seth, can't hear him. If you're a rat, then you should have some pretty fucking tiny hands. So that's that's, awesome. that's, that's a little pretty, bit hurtful to me. That's a pretty inconsiderate and uh, pretty maybe offensive thing to say about what? his hands. The, the, the tiny hand. Okay, okay. I, I, I apologize, Seth. You'll have to understand. I'm in a little bit of a predicament. I've been burned and chained in here for a while. Of an ant. Josh me, Josh me, please be quiet, Seth. I am very sorry for calling your hands tiny. You are probably an amazing person, a very self-possessed rat, I'm sure, and I would like to request your assistance, please, to help me, because Josh Me's big pudgy hands are just not going to cut it. That's... You've got you've got smaller hands than Josh Me. You're the only one who can reach in here properly and help me out, if you'd be willing. I, and, and I would very much appreciate it, because it is um, a little uh, uncomfortable hanging here like this. So would you please... Reach in here and um, help undo these chains for me. You called me pudgy. We'll get back to that, Josh. I, I'm talking to I, Seth right now. It's it, wow. You can only talk to him if I tell you what he says. So I'm kind of the middleman. Actually, and, he's that's the only way he can talk to me. I can still talk to him. Yeah. Well, good luck, uh, Seth. What say you? He says that you need to apologize for being so insensitive about my pudgy hand. Yes, because you know what Seth's saying. He's the That's one. the point. He's saying this so you'll apologize without Seth actually saying anything. I mean, I can try and uh, see if I can pull him out. I don't really know. I, You know, they, they never let me touch the bag before. They always, like, kind of went in and out somehow. I don't really know. Okay, I'll tell him. So he says you first need to apologize for being insensitive about my hands, like you did with him, and then he said I can tell you the rest. Some part of me doesn't believe you, but just to get things moving along, Josh, me, I'm sorry about calling your hands pudgy. Thank you. You have to understand, I'm a little stressed right now. Yeah, and they're also tiny. <laughs> Anyways, he says he doesn't know if he can do it. He says maybe. He says he wasn't really sure exactly what you, they did you to know, like do all the stuff, but he said you know he can give it the gold college try. You know what? I'll I'll what's a college? Never mind. Anyway, you know what? I'll take maybe. At this point, honestly, I I'm praying for a miracle here. Okay. So <laughs> Seth reaches into the bag and um grabs hold of Ramash and pulls him out. Uh however, he's still tiny. Um okay, uh, one problem solved. Thank you, Seth. Um, oh, this is, this is not good. You're kind of cute. Um, thank you. Don't get any funny ideas, bud. Now, obviously, um, pulling me out of the bag didn't make me, uh, bigger. So, uh, let's move on to the next thing. Where's the rest of the party? Uh. That's, that's not reassuring, bud. 
I don't know. Did so you, he is. Did you he is see the him on, did you see him on the way here? I mean, where are we anyway? Shut, What's his back? Shut up for a second. I'm trying to explain, and you keep adding on stacks of questions. So, uh, gnome dude said to hold the door, and then he ran off to find some other rats or some shit, but then he disappeared. Uh, he said that the tall drow dude and the the hell dude are. Uh, running down in the tunnels that we're currently in. So I ran down after him after I realized that the gnome dude lied about being back because he never came back. And I got kind of awkward, so I left. And so I ran, and I ran into a mind flare. And then the mind flare, when I dropped the bags and I found Seth and rescued Seth. And then I was running and dipped into a room. And bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, we're here. Okay. So, I don't know where they um, are. We're kind of going after them. Okay. Uh, all right. I got enough to work with. Uh, Seth, are you able to talk to me also, or can you only, you know, talk to Josh and me? Is this, how does this work, buddy? I'm only able to project myself to one person at a time. So, if I stop talking to you and talk to him, then I don't know if we'll be able to talk again. So, I guess that's up to you, friend and savior. Well,. I hate to seem selfish, but you're the only real friend I've got right now, if I'm being honest. Everyone else is kind of mean to me, so I'd like to enjoy this as long as possible. But if you think it's best to communicate with him, you know what? Do what you think is best. You're your own rat person. I mean, I can keep talking to him through you if that's what you need. I, I don't need anything. I I leave the choice up to you. What would you prefer? Do you want to just keep it this way, or do you want to try talking to him and see what happens? I mean, I think it's probably better if I just keep talking to you. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll go that way. Uh, He says that he can, at least for now, only talk to you through me. All right. That's cool. Um, All right. So then we... I think the best thing we can do right now is go find the rest of the party and... Try to get the hell out of hell, or at least um, find Roland. Hopefully he can uh, help assist turning me big again. Do I still have the shackles on my arms? Or did the rat kind of help me get those off? I think when he pulled you out, the shackles mm-hmm. broke. Okay. Awesome. My arms are stronger Wait, than the shackles. Wait, when did we get into contact with Roland again? I don't remember. Uh, I don't, all I remember is us him telling... Us about, I don't know, communicating with him somehow. Yeah, the last the one that time I tried us. to talk to him, it ended up being a flat out lie and not Roland. So I'm not. That bet- was in the dream state, okay. But I'm not betting all my coins on that particular situation. Fine, fine, fine. Pick me and Seth up, and uh, I don't know, put me on, like, in your hand or on your shoulder or something so I can see, and uh, let's get out of this room and go find the rest of the guys. I feel like Gulliver right now. You feel like Gulliver? <laughs> Ramash. Yo. I do want to point out, you won't take any damage or anything like that if you're in the backpack. I'm just, if you want to stay out of the backpack, that's fine. I'm just telling you, you literally are the size of an ant, so um, okay, I'm your, Ant-Man. Your, your, uh, your AC but, is going to be more or less non-existent. Oh, Assuming they could hit me, but um, right. But it sh- I mean, sh- should you <laughs> trip and fall and squash from? Yeah, okay. I mean, if Josh and me falls and you go flying off of him, just the impact alone Splash. could potentially kill you. Okay, um, here's what we can do. Uh, let me get back in the little tiny bag and put it back in on Seth, and then Seth can carry me, and he can either ride in your backpack or run around with you. And uh, we can find the other party. Just let me know what's going on, okay? I mean, I kind of, you know, am useless, and I would really like to get big again. <laughs> oh, I wish there was a way I could record you saying that. But uh, you're really complicated. You know that first you want to ride on my shoulder, now you want to be in the bag. You know what? You do what suits your little tiny ant self. We'll figure it out. I can either chuck the little bag in my bag, or we can do whatever. Um... Sure. Whatever. All right, get an old bag. Scoop. And Scoop Ramash is going to climb back into the little bag cell thingy. All right, Josh, me closes 
the bag and puts it in his bag. Okay, I just want to want want to say by the way, so we don't have to call it the bag cell thingy ongoing. It's a small pocket dimension. Oh, inside oh, inside yay. of the inside oh, of the small bag. bag better small pocket dimension. Oh. I mean, you can call you can call it the bag or whatever you want to call it, but <laughs> you're just clarifying. Small bag cell thing is a little wordy. <laughs> Come on, don't. Ah. Uh. So I'm I'm just I'm just and also right, just for game mechanics dimension. so you also know what it is. It's a Fair. it's a small yeah. pocket dimension. Yeah. Okay, pocket Seth, dimension. we're gonna get going. So I don't know if you want to like Damn show it. in my bag or on my shoulder in my pocket. I don't really care. You do what you want. You I'll just ride on your shoulder. shoulder. All right. Well, hope I don't trip. Hope you don't get knocked off. Can we still Here we go. That's okay. I have great reflexes. Oh, yeah. He doesn't. That's why he went in the bag in the bag. <laughs> His expression. We'll, <laughs> we'll say, uh, uh, Ramash, we'll say that um, because they're, you know, friendly to you, I guess, they didn't fully close the bag up, so you can hear what's going on outside. Okay. And if you yell... They they would be able to hear you if they're listening for you. Okay, cool. <laughs> Next in the order would have been those rats who are again still stuck. I think at this point, a couple of more of them are starting to wake up, but they uh, they're not posing any kind of immediate threat. So, uh, Ryder, I guess Ryder decides that he's gonna help Mikael up. Uh, so we'll do a uh, strength. Yes, sir. Check. Oh, uh, sixteen. Yeah, you pull, you pull Mikael up. He oh, well, I guess we can't go that way. Indeed. Did the tunnel continue past the stairs? So, yeah, two two things. First of all, this tunnel did dead end at this staircase. On your last uh, turn, I did. It was only like the first three steps of this staircase that are illusory. So you could, uh, if you, I mean, if you relay that information to Ryder, you guys could conceivably jump over this fairly easily. Okay. It's not like an uncrossable chasm or anything. Okay. Or, I mean, you you can also go back the other way. I'm just giving you your options. It appears, Ryder, that this was only a trap to catch anyone at the base of the stairs or unfamiliar with them. The staircase does continue upward. Do you want to give it a try? Because I'm fine with... I mean, if if, they're, if they put so much effort as to put a trap right there, I'm going to say that there's something interesting above it. I follow that reason. Plus, going back and going down a tunnel with water dripping doesn't sound quite as enticing. All right. Um, so can I make a check to leap up there, or is that beyond my turn? Uh, yeah, go ahead and do an athletics check. Okie dokie. We're doing, we're playing a little bit of Calvin Ball with the tur- with the turns at ah. this point. Oh, Bonza, I am rolling real good tonight. Yeah, that's a 22. Uh, yeah, you are able to hop over these first couple stairs and you land, uh, safely on the other side. Um, can I do a quick thing real quick? Can I touch the stair after it? And see if it's illusionary. Yeah, I guess we'll just say as you land, you kind of uh, sort of reach your hands forward, and uh, the rest of these stairs all seem solid, as far as you can tell, going forward. Well, it seems like the rest of our climb shall continue unimpeded. So he is, like, leaning across this, holding the other side? I mean, he just, I don't know, what are you, you just jumped across, are you just standing there, or? Yeah. Okay. Just kind of waiting for... Mikael to make sure that if he misses his check, he can uh, pick him up and throw him back on the ledge. Okay, cool. So we'll actually say, uh, Mikael, I assume you were following. Yeah. Okay. So is that also an athletics check? Yep, and I'll let you roll with advantage because we'll say that Ryder's standing there like hand outstretched to catch you if you need the assistance. The first one's a 24. Okay. Well, you don't need to roll past that, because uh, 24 is going to be more than enough to do it. You hop somehow even more uh, gracefully than Ryder. May I think you, uh, when you jump, you actually put a foot on the wall and kind of like parkour jump across it. It looks very cool. Parkour, parkour. Oh, cool. Oh, yep. I assume you two are then just going to start climbing up the staircase. Yep. Correct. Yep. Okay. 
Moving forward, uh, Ramash, it is your turn. Okay. Ramash is going to feel around, uh, kind of look around the uh, uh, pocket dimension. Right now, you have a tiny bit more light because they left the bag cracked a little bit. Okay. But it's not bright in here unless right. you're going to do something about Ramash that. Ramash wants to do an arcana check okay. of the room. That's a 22. Okay. Yeah, dude, it's a pocket dimension. Everything in this bitch is magical. I was checking to see if it's magical. He, uh, I should have been more specific. <laughs> uh, he's What he's trying to determine is if there's some way he can turn off the magic that's keeping him tiny. Like okay. if there's inconsistencies in this room that catches magical senses or whatever Unplugged that he might be able to mess life. with. Okay, well, I, I will tell you this right off the bat. Mm-hmm. This particular magic is outside of your scope of knowledge. Okay. Just... Yeah, all right. Y- y- you're just... You're not really at that point. However, I will give you this. You are able to discern that there is a particular concentration of magic at the sort of the door frame of this dimension, if you will. All right. So it has... You you are able to ascertain that it has something to do with magic that's activated as you cross through the portal. I should you know what I mean, not yeah, portal, but through, yeah, that, through, the, through the through the exit. But you're not really sure past that how you would do anything with that magic. Damn, I wish I was a wizard. All right. Well, in the meantime, he's going to attempt to cast healing word on it, or not healing words, sorry, cure wounds on himself <laughs> as a third level spell. So here's the roll to see if I even perform magic. Nope. That's a seven. Uh, it works as normal. Cool. All right. I heal myself for 18. Not Alrighty. too shabby. Not bad at all. No, not bad at all. Considering the bad luck I've had. <laughs> Next up is the flayer who moves and Sibo sees him. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. How's that for a twist? You have just appeared in this room, and he uh, walks in and appears to be aware of your presence, but completely unperturbed, and uh, kind of almost is like examining the room. He's looking at the cots where you were laying, and then sort of offhand, it just kind of goes, So, Sibo, what do you want in life? Is this some kind of trick? It's just a simple question. (sighs) Well... Um, at one point in time, I wanted to be a musician, and then I wanted to be the greatest thief, and now, now I just want to get out of here, and I'm willing to do whatever, whatever I have to do to get out. What if I was to tell you that the path out is by joining me? Again, I can't really let you go in the traditional sense. I I have to keep you from your purpose, but I don't need to keep you here necessarily. I could let you roam the overworld and do as you please. I could uh, have some of my... I, I have many friends. I could have them give you musical abilities, thief's talents, wealth. I, I could give you whatever you need. Yeah, it all sounds nice, but... Then again, you still won't tell me who it is that you work for and all that. I'm I'm sorry, I just thought that it was sort of a semantic discussion. I'm, you do know who I work for, don't you? Oh, you know, I'm uh, I'm pretty good at reading between the lines, but uh the lines have been shifting too much recently. I really need someone to just spell it out for me. It's, it's Maliaklis. He can't let you go on your purpose. He has plans for you. Plans to keep us locked in hell for, for as long as it takes for him to, to take over the overworld? Listen, I've been alive for a very long time. Rulers come and go. Who, who cares who's in charge? It's about what you can get. But if we give up all hope in the world, then is there anything... If, if there's nothing left to fight for, then why do we live? Wealth, power, status. 
I, as I said, I can give you all of these things. Who cares which figurehead is in charge? How does that benefit you? What would you have me do? Join me. Just... We can go wherever you want. Let Maliocalus play his little games and establish whoever he wants in power. And then when everything has died down, you can come back. We can arrange, you know... You can we can set you up wherever you want. I'm sure that for your cooperation, Maliocles would give you whatever you want. We could set you up with a castle somewhere, or he could put you in charge of the the white timber forest, or whatever you want. It won't be the same. Not after it's all burnt to the ground. <sighs> and here I I had hoped you wouldn't be such a stubborn-headed idealist. Hey, what can I say? You know, I grew up with, uh, I grew up on the streets in the forest. The forest streets. <laughs> <laughs> that never leaves you. You can take the gnome out of the forest. Not the forest out of the gnome. Well, that is unfortunate. Uh, Sebo, I need you to make an intelligence saving throw. Critical fail. <laughs> Buddy, you're not uh, mm. gonna like this. We're not gonna make it. <laughs> no! no! We're, we're gonna, gonna make it. Whoa! We're, we're not gonna, gonna make it. How do you know? Okay, so that was a critical fail. It was a bad time to critical fail, bud. It was. Uh, you're gonna take 44 points of uh, psychic damage, and you are stunned for one minute. It's only 22 points of damage. That's how much health I have right now. But I'll take the stun. You're resistant to psychic damage? Uh, any incoming damage to me, if I can see it coming at me, it's half. Hmm. I've been staring that's, this dude. I don't know if you can really... Down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna hit dude, me in the brain. He's literally, just gets a little he's bit literally more been intense, talking like, to this dude, knowing that like, there's an attack <laughs> coming. Like, he's been prepared this entire time. He's squinting like Rental that psychic fortitude. damage. Though. All right, I'll get. I okay. I will say this j- for future reference because I don't want to set a precedent. You can't see psychic damage, so just to get that out of the way. However, because he did talk to you, and I think you had a good idea that this was probably a join or die situation. I will give you that in this instance, you were probably ready for it. Thank you. I just want to. Put that on the books that I am not I giving you the ability it. to see psychic damage. With my monocle, I okay. can see invisible Just... energies. <laughs> <laughs> he can see the mental I am, hand reach out. I am just, I really want that to be clear, okay? Moving forward, uh, Sebo, it is now your turn. And I'm um, stunned. So, let me see, hang on. Can you um, roll to see if you can break this? You stuff? can re- uh, do your saving throw again to see if you can. An intelligence saving throw? Yes. How about a 21? Uh, you snap out of it. You no longer stun. However, you will start the next turn prone. <laughs> Alright, and that's my whole turn? Uh, yeah. Breaking yeah. breaking that is your turn. Okay. Josh and me, you're up. Alright, so here's the plan. I'm gonna... I'm gonna see about... I'm gonna open the door. Make sure Mr. Mind Flare ain't not there. And then... We're gonna... I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Dragon Boy? So I ran into the Mind Flare dude at a, at a crossroads. Not really a crossroads, more like a T. Uh, and I had to choose left to right, but I didn't really have the time to choose left to right because I kind of ran into the dude. So I have no idea if left might have been a better way to go or if we should continue down the hall to the right. Well, if I'd have wager any professional guess, I'd say we continue down the way you were going to begin with. The last place you knew he was was back the way you came. And the only real guess we can have right now is that he's either still there or looking for you. So let's just go the way you came or were going and hope he didn't travel down that way looking for you. I would assume he would either have seen you come in here or would have tried the lock or something. I don't know. Also, because I'm so tiny, I could also uh, crawl under the door and uh, see if he's there or not. You know what? I like that idea. And he's gonna, like, 
take the little bag out, put it on the floor, and open it up. All right, little bug man, do your thing. And Ramash is going to, real quick, peek out from under the door. Not He's not going to, like, leave the door extensively. He's just going <laughs> to be right here, what you're saying. He's going to peek out and see if, if he can see or hear anything. Wow, Should geez. I do a perception check? Do a perception check. Okay. That's a na- unnatural 20. Okay. Uh, this uh, tunnel is clear and free of any dangers. Okay. He's going to crawl back to... Josh me. Well, I should say, you see some pretty aggressive looking ants. But, uh, oh, those fuckers better not come near me. They will burn in hell. All right. Hey, it's a bad neighborhood. It's a real bad neighborhood. If he sees an ant I and he's turn. tiny, then he can he turn into a giant ant when he's, giant, when he's normal size. At least I know I can turn into an ant. But anyway. Okay, better get away from these guys. Um, okay, the hallway's clear of danger. Please pick me up before these giant pincer-bearing thingies try to attack me. I'm sorry, what? Well, you said it's clear, but then you said there's something there. Well, it, they're, ti- they're tiny. They're about my size. Oh, so they're probably like ants or something. Ants. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, you know what you are right now? Because he's so small. It's kind of funny. Duly noted. Duly noted. Please pick me back up. He's going to crawl back into the bag. He's going to pick the bag up, and he's going to put it into the bag. Uh, and then he's going to... Slowly unlock the door and then, like, open the door up. Glance to the right when he first opened this door and then look to the left on the other side of the door as he's opening it to make sure the coast is clear. I mean, yeah, the coast is clear. And then he's going to shut the door and carry on to the right. Okay. I'm just going to do a couple checks here for you. Do an investigation check. That's a critical fail. What? Okay. Does that make these other checks moot? Do a dexterity save. Please tell me you didn't. Oh, uh, ten. Okay. Do a perception check. Five. And do um, one more investigation. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, next up is the rats who, um, have now all woken up, but are still locked inside the room. Oh, I thought they were going to make Rat Voltron and, like, <laughs> through the door. <laughs> not, not, yet. not yet. Not yet. Don't give That's away my true. end game. <laughs> Come Red on. He's, he's Doctor Strange. He looked into the 14,605 possible outcomes. <laughs> How many have Rat Voltron? One. One. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ryder, you're up. If we had more time for this session, I would definitely have a Ramash fights ant segment, but... Are there even stats for ants? I mean... I'm oh, sure make, there are. He'll make stats. <laughs> if you make them, I'll I get them after stats. I win. All right, so I'm climbing up. Are we... Is it like a tunnel? Are we climbing up stairs? Oh, yeah, this is like a spiral staircase. Well, then I'm climbing up the stairs all the way to the okay. top. My um, dude... When you get to the top of the staircase, uh, you end at a, a solid wall. Yeah, the staircase ends at nothing. Huh. Um, can I do a perception check? You can indeed, my good sir. I would encourage it. Oh, look, a wall. <laughs> Twelve? Yeah, I mean, uh, you think that this more or less looks like a wall. <laughs> You, you don't really, you see, uh, you, I'll give you with a 12, you can tell that people have been in this area recently, but other than that, it's just a wall. Well, that's anticlimactic. Uh, Mikael, who I assume has followed Ryder up. Mm Mm-hmm. We've reached the top of the staircase? Yes. Okay. And the contents of the room? There is no room, you just... There is no room. The top of the stair, the top of the staircase is just a blank stone wall. And it's light. solid. Like, it's not an illusion. Well, he got a 12 out <laughs> of perception. If you want to investigate further. Yeah. Then absolutely. That's an 11. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that might be a wall. As you look around, uh, this just looks like a wall to you. I mean, I tried to touch it. But... Oh, are you going to actually try to touch it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as you put your hand on it, your hand does pass through it. Ryder, this is more than our second illusion, I do believe. Um, do you want to make sure that we're not going to fall to our deaths if we walk through this one? Well, if it appears to be an illusion, I'd like to stick my head through it, I guess. 
Make a uh, dexterity save. <laughs> That's a critical fail. <laughs> oh, God. Critical fail. <laughs> it's like, let me grab the dice. dice. <laughs> 21 against AC. Yeah, that hits. Okay. We went up on Hill that was here with her full plate. Rest in peace, Bruno. Uh, you're going to take 12 points of psychic damage. And you are uh, grabbed by some Mind Flare tentacles and dragged through this portal. And as you are being grappled by these tentacles, you see Sibo laying on the ground in front of you. Oh, shit. Alrighty. However, you are now being uh, grappled. And explains how um, the game runs so fucking fast. Do Ramash. I do struggling sound effects or. I mean, if you want to do some Foley work for RJ to add it in later. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> it's literally the same noise that Dracarys, Dracarys when he was trying to get the torch on the wall. <laughs> it's the same sound. It's great. I think you need to clip that sound bite and save that to be inserted for all of the uh, hot coffee scenes. <laughs> <laughs> And then they go to their room at the tavern. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. It's too serious, guys. Stop uh. fucking around. <laughs> Ramash. Yo. You are unable to see what's going on. However, you hear uh, quite a bit of swearing and some thuds and some uh, pained uh, groans and things of that nature. <laughs> Well, that can't be good. He's thinking this to himself. That can't be good. Uh, I gotta figure out how to get big again before something happens to that dumbass out there. <laughs> All right. And so, um, can I do an investigation of the doorway out of the pocket dimension? Maybe see, like, see if I can trigger something or something. Uh, I mean, you can investigate it. All right. Not very impressive, Ashley. That was a six. Yeah, I mean, you can't really do anything with this uh, with this doorway. You mm-hmm. kind of push at it a little bit, and nothing okay. seems to happen. All right. Um, don't know what to do. There's not much I can do. I'm tiny. I mean, you can just if you do, if you not don't want to do anything else at this point, you can just pass and move on. Yeah, I guess I'm just, just giving you the opportunity of a turn. You don't have. To I do will. Anything. I'll pass for now. Okay. Um. So next up is the uh, the mind flare. Who is grappling Mikael? Oh, I'm sorry. Mikael, you actually have to make a, uh, an intelligence save. That's a four. Okay. So you are actually being, uh, you're actually stunned while you're being grappled here. Oh, God. Uh, and he's actually going to try and uh, hit you again now that he's holding you. I can't resist. I'm stunned. Uh, 21. That's not bad. Nine points of psychic damage that you take. All right. Is this going to wind up in Ramash being left alive by himself in hell? The side Probably. Of an ant living out because I apparently am tumbling in something and only have nineteen points. I'm going to join the ant colony, we're, learn to communicate them, and uh, communicate with them, and we will come back and have our revenge. We're going to have a whole yeah. We're going to have a whole campaign that's just called Ant Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sibo, uh, you're up. Um, okay, so since, since Sibo, like, kind of snapped out of it, he hasn't moved at all, so he's just trying to, like, get his bearings, um, he saw Mikael get pulled through, like, a portal, right? Well, you just saw him kind of get pulled through the wall, basically. Oh, okay. He stuck his head out, but he was right next to the Mind Flare, and he just got grabbed and pulled out. Interesting. Okay. I guess, fuck it, man, Sibo's gonna pull out his daggers, and he's gonna jump to his feet. Which takes half of his movement speed, but this mind flare is like right next to him, anyways. Correct. So then he's gonna go forward with his dagger attacks. Okay. Trying to slash at like the tentacle that's holding Mikhail down, trying to release him. It's gonna be 19, the first one. That hit. And I guess that was the that night. Well, I wish I wouldn't have re-rolled that now, because it was a 19, but then I moved it, and it didn't... I wasn't sure. So now what is it? 
It's a two now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one attack. At least it wasn't a critical fail. That is true. At least it wasn't a critical fail. You know I'm trying, bud. <laughs> Eleven damage. All right, you hit him for eleven damage. Um, oh, and then I guess there's not a lot of room to hide, but I guess Sibo will take his disengage action. Okay. And kind of just like move his way out because there's really nowhere to hide. I think yeah, I think eleven damage specifically targeted like that was enough to uh, hit in a way that you freed uh, Mikael. Okay. Uh, so, Mikael, I think because you're stunned, he frees you, but as you uh, are dropped, you kind of drop to your knees. So you'll start your next turn uh, kind of on your knees in front of the Mind Flayer here. Yeah, as long as I can break free from being stunned, right? Exactly. Yeah, well, let me see here. Um, Does the no, you're no, the, the, the stunned ends when you're not being grappled anymore. Okay. So because you're free, you're good to go. Nice. Okay. So with that, it is Joshimi's turn. Okay. Uh, Joshimi. Yeah. I would like you to do a sneak attack uh, with advantage. What, what weapon am I using? Whatever weapon you want. Oh, fuck. We're going to use a short sword, dude. That's going to be 16. Okay. As... The Mind Flayer is hit by Sibo and uh, staggers backwards a few paces. Out of a trap door that was previously unseen comes a battered and bruised Joshimi. <laughs> he is dripping wet. He has a large gash on his forehead. He's taken six damage, by the way. Oh, fuck. Six um, damage. Wait, where did Joshimi end up? He was at 19, now he's at 13. Where did he end up? Yeah. Well, because of the way his rolls went, he first went down the wrong tunnel, went into the wa- the water side of the tunnel, and had uh, some misadventures there. <laughs> and then he failed his other saves, and he fell in the hole and had to climb back <laughs> up. And, however, inside the hole, he found another side passage, which led him up to another trap door instead of coming through to where Ryder is. Uh, so he is now behind the Mind Flayer <laughs> and has just stabbed his short sword. So go ahead and roll damage. Okay. All right, short sword. 1d6. And sneak attack. Action d6. Extra 3d6. So. Wow, so many ones? How did you manage to roll that many ones? <laughs> uh, that's going to be 10 piercing damage. Okay, you stab this Mind Flayer in the back, and uh, he is not looking great. I don't know what it worked out if I were fire about three one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rider time? And uh, Rider time. somewhere uh, down a hallway that you cannot see, the door that previously held the rats has just been chewed through. Oh, oh shit. Dun, don't dun, drop dun. me. Dun, 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 Rider, dun. you're up. You just uh, a few moments ago saw Mikhail be dragged through a stone wall, essentially. So I stepped through after hearing the commotion that uh, Josh and me had created. I see the Mind Flayer, and I immediately cast uh, Eldritch Blast. So that's 18. 18 does hit him. All right, so 1d10 plus 7 plus oh, 4. Son, are you winning? That's 16 damage. Okay. Jesus you uh, step through this hidden doorway, immediately assess the situation, and outstretch your hand, launching Eldritch Blast directly into the chest of this Mind Flayer, and he gasps as he drops to his knees and is dead. Holy shit, guys, we did it! We did it! What's going on? What just happened? What's going on out there? Nothing. We My did God, it. What go? We killed the mind. Uh, see what slaps him on. You see, killed the mind flare without me. <laughs> Brush his hand. You're not fair. Yes. Where, where's Ramash? Oh yeah, Ramash is an ant, or like an ant side. He's I'm like, not look, an he's ant. a little bug man. He takes the little pack and he like dumps Ramash out. Ramash, you fucker. 
Not not like dump dumps, but he like um, can see who sets it down. Wash up. Can I do an arcana check on Ramash? Can I do a perception check? To see to, Just to see me Ramash? <laughs> to hear anything? No, he's, you no, can hear him like regular. I, I sound feet. normal. I sound oh, normal. Well, what you can tell. Oh, you're thinking um, that. 13 plus 3. 16. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can tell that there's a lot of magic going on with this. Before you guys really have time to do too much, however, through the portal that, Sibo, you know that you came through this doorway, you see a few rats start to scurry through. However, they are quickly followed by a mind flare, and then another, and another, and another, and another, and before you know it, six mind flares are arrayed in front of you. With a swarm of psionic rats scurrying between their feet. Um, so, Ryder, now would be the best time to tell Roland to get the the fuck out of here! Already on it, buddy. I've already sent him a message. Yeah, but you should then just go to a mind flare? Um, and, Ramash, uh, uh, climb up into my hand real quick. We're going to need you. I'm gonna cast Dispel Magic on Ramash. Okay. You're going to need to do that real quick here. It's instantaneous, so... Okay. Um, so, Ramash, you getting in his hand? Yeah, I'm getting in his hand. Okay. I want to be big again. Do you have to roll for that, or just... Uh... Uh, it depends. If it's a third-level spell that's got me tiny or lower, it happens automatically. Fourth-level spell or higher, he has to roll a 10 plus the spell's level to make it disappear. Okay. You're going to have to roll. That's a 19. Damn. Your hand's so about to get can, real heavy. So, he, <laughs> if it were a ninth level spell or better, he beat it. Ramash stays small. Damn it! Holy oh. shit, Ski! Okay. As you guys group up and array yourselves to uh, face against this group of mind flayers, behind you, you hear uh, a noise, and a portal opens, and you hear... Holy damn shit! What's going on here? Oh fuck! Holy shit! Go to Roland. Doesn't matter. We're out of the end. And Roland, get us the fuck out of here. Roland quickly surveys the situation and said, "How the hell did you piss off this many mind flares? <laughs> we killed one. You killed one." And he turns and he looks and he goes, "That's the leader. Why did you kill him? He wasn't very good." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I, as long as we get out of here, I think we're gonna be okay. Zemo, you, we're in hell, and you're already digging us deeper. It doesn't. It doesn't damn matter. Look, go through here. You gotta scatter. There's some portals on the other side. Everybody, pick one and go. Oh, not again. Sebo runs through the first portal. Okay, Please, so the first portal, uh, you can actually see through to the other side. It's like a doorway about ten feet across. As you push through this first portal, you can see on the other side. There are five different portals uh, of about that can fit about one person that you have to jump through. Everyone, go through the same portal. Remember what happened last time. Didn't he say we okay, had to split so up? Okay, so Sibo, you went through first. Yeah. Uh, pick a portal, one through five. Five. Okay. Sibo runs through portal number five, and it disappears. Uh oh. <laughs> I run through portal number one. Okay. Carrying me, I assume. Carrying Ramash. I swear to God, if you... Josh and me will run through portal number Trace. That's assuming it allows me to go with you. Okay. Imagine if I fell <laughs> Ant World. Ant World. Mikhail, uh, seeing only the two portals left, goes through the one on the left, which I assume is number two. Uh, yes. Mikhail, because you're the last one through, uh, I need you to do a dexterity save as two of the Mind Flayers have jumped forward and are wrapping their tentacles around your face. That's a ton. Uh, you see tentacles enclose over your face. You gasp for air. You can't see anything. And suddenly, through some sort of sheer will, you are breaking through. You're stumbling, you're running, you can barely even see, but you dive through portal number two. 